I wanted to ask on M and A if that's okay. I just wanted to check your appetite on uh, on acquisitions and especially at this point in the cycle, given that so many of these uh, digital assets have uh, have been inflated in terms of uh, valuation during the, the pandemic here. Any any change in your thinking around M and A? Tension. I'll start, and, and maybe uh, Dan will jump in, but. I think there's there's two really important points to consider when we think about um, acquisitions for PayPal. The first is that we are somewhat unique in the fintech ecosystem insofar as uh, we enjoy um, outsized growth rates, but we also are extremely profitable, and that results in the type of free cash flow generation with 20% plus free cash flow margins. And that it's that uniqueness that allows us the ability to have this um, this effectively an asset where we can go out and look at inorganic uh, opportunities uh, to complement what we're doing organically. So I think that's, that's one important point to think about. The second, and it really gets to your point around some where some valuations are, but we exercise a tremendous amount of discipline in the way that we look at this. And, and from an overall capital allocation perspective, you know, our view is every dollar of capital has to compete with the other alternatives out there, whether that be organic, whether that be returning cash to shareholders or going out and, and uh, acquiring a company. And so we, we will remain disciplined and, and really view our um, acquisitive strategy over a, a multi-year, longer-term time frame. Yeah, I just uh, add to that, uh, to Jim, um, if you think about our need for acquisition, you know, that – ways uh, against like what is our pace of organic innovation and in 2020 we put out more product and services than we've ever put out before i said in my remarks that we're going to step up that pace in 2021 and we're going to go do that um when i look at all the investment we've made over the past five plus years in our tech infrastructure in our compliance and risk management what that's enabled us to do now is pretty radically accelerate um, uh, the amount of software releases that we have. We put out last year between config releases and, and software releases um, some 60,000 releases. That was up 30% year over year at a time where we're all working from home. You know, so our productivity has gone way up. Our developer uh, toolkits are much improved. We're using modern programming language. We have a service-oriented architecture. And by the way, all that's happening while the number of bugs has gone down 25% in all of our releases from 2019 levels. Um, and so I'm really happy with the pace of organic um, uh, innovation and our ability to deliver products, and that takes away a lot of our need to do acquisition. I would just build on John's point we obviously have a strong balance sheet, strong cash flow. Uh, we will be acquisitive going forward, but we're going to look at that, as John said, in a very disciplined manner. We're going to look at talent type of acquisitions. You know, where can we do maybe a smaller acquisition to bring in great talent in a particular area? Uh, we'll look at geographic types of acquisitions where, you know, we may want to go after a geography, and there may be a player or two there that could help us leapfrog into that market, uh, and we'll, we'll look at that carefully. And if there's a real capability that, not that we can't develop and do, but it's gonna take us too long to get there because of what we're trying to do on our roadmap, um, then we would take a look at that as well. Those are kind of the basic areas, uh, I would say. So I think we've got a good one-two punch between uh, what we can do internally and what we can do uh, from an inorganic perspective. Yep. No, it's very clear. It's going to be fun to track the, uh, the organic products for sure. Thanks a lot, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yep.